Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. It's Mr. Zigner. We're going to be looking at representations of functions. Basically, that means different ways that functions can be shown or shared. So right here, one thing that pops up right away is what's called a function rule. A function rule you can see here is an equation that's describing the relationship between inputs. So right here, they have their little function machine an input, a number that's put in, which is called the independent variable, and then the output number that you get afterwards. So in this case, the equation for this function rule was y equals 3x. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. All right, well, let's get started. So uh, one of these many ways to represent functions is just as like a little statement or sentence. So here they want us to turn this particular sentence, uh, write a function rule for the output is 5 less than the input. All right, so as you can see here, the sentence itself breaks down into an equation. So the output, that's always going to be our y variable, is, means equals, 5 less than. If something's 5 less than something else, that means you're supposed to subtract 5 from something. And right here they tell us what to subtract it from, the input. So the equation ends up being y equals x minus 5. All right, here's another one. The output is the square of the input. Now, if you've had me as a teacher, you know that squaring means raising to the second power. So let's turn that into um, an equation. So the output, and once again, the output is the y value, is means equals the square, so we raise something to the second power, of the input, and that's going to be our x variable. So the rule is y equals x squared. All right. Uh, what is the value? Here's another thing we have to do, is actually find the value of a function based on a certain amount that they give you. So what is the value of y equals 2x plus 5 when x equals 3? When they ask you a question like that, you just need to replace the letter x with the number 3. You can see here they took out the x, replaced it with a 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. So when x is 3, y equals 11. Pretty straightforward. Other ways that functions can be shown is in a table. So here's a table of values, your input numbers, the numbers that you've got, uh, and then those turn into ordered pairs. Now, what is this based on? Oh, here it is, y equals x plus two. So here's what they mean. So x, this number one, plus two is equal to three. So one ordered pair, one input and output is one, three. Two plus two is four. So another ordered pair would be 2, 4. And finally, you could even take this input-output table and plot those points on a grid, drawing a line through those points, and you can even end up making a graph of the function. So there's even another way to represent a function is with a table or a graph. Okay, keep moving on. All right, so we're going to start doing these. I'm going to do the odds for a little while, and then I'm going to switch to doing some evens for us. All right, here we go. Grab a pen here. Oh, no, not a highlighter. Eh, purple will do. So odds first. Write the function rule for the statement. Okay, so we already looked at some examples, so let's see if we can do one ourselves. The output is four times the input. Now, if you recall earlier, the output was the variable y, and the input is the variable x. And as I read through that, I was saying, hey, you know, really the sentence turns into the equation. So let's see if we can work that out. The output, y, is, remember what is was? It's the equal sign. Four times the input. So four times this x value. Let's simplify that by just saying y equals 4x. And there we go. There's a function rule for this statement. I'm going to skip the evens for now. All right, so here's another one. Find the value of y for the given value of x. We already saw an example of that, so let's just go for this one. All right, so they give us this equation here, y equals x over 3. Now that looks like a fraction, and fractions are actually division problems. So let's see, what should x equal? Here it is, 12. So all we have to really do is replace our x value with a 12. Do you see what I mean? Here, let me write that for you. So y equals, instead of x, x is 12, so 12 over 3. And now again, like I said, 
fractions are division problems. So what is 12 divided by 3? Well, 3, 6, 9, 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So there we go. The value of y for the given value of x of 12, yep, y would end up equaling 4. There we go. Okay, again, skipping this number 4, but all you'd have to do is put the 2 right here where the x is and solve. All right, I wanted to save this slightly tougher word problem for me to show you how to do. Um, you set up a hot chocolate stand at a football game. Okay, the cost of your supplies is $75. You charge 50 cents for each cup of hot chocolate. All righty. Write a function, probably as an equation, we can choose that method, that represents the profit, okay, the amount of money you make for selling C cups of hot chocolate. All right. Well, let's see. What was our setup here? Um, it costs $75, and we're going to charge people 50 cents for every cup. Well, to make up our uh, $75 that it cost us, we're going to have to sell a lot of cups of hot chocolate. So let's see here. How about the um, profit is equal to, let's see, 50 cents. Get that decimal in there. Uh, and then they said you see for cups. Yep, 50 cents per cup. Okay, um, minus, minus the $75. Okay, do you see why I didn't minus 75? That's because we have to take away from the money we have coming in how much it costs to buy the materials, the supplies. Yeah, because profit is actually the amount of money you make. I have a little stray mark here. Let me get rid of that. Is the, a profit is the amount of money you make, so selling the cups of hot chocolate at 50 cents each, minus your expenses. All right, so let's see, write a function that represents profit for selling C cups of hot chocolate. Okay, I think I have it right here. That looks good. All right, part B. You will break even when the cost of your supplies equals your income. All right, so we're not too worried about making a profit, I guess. We're just wanting to break even so we don't lose money. I guess that makes sense. Okay, you'll break even when the supplies, right here, um, everything that we sold and what it cost us will equal how much income we made. All right. So how many cups of hot chocolate must you sell to break even? All right. Well, that means, okay, we're not going to make a profit. So I guess our profit would end up being zero. We're not interested in a profit. We just want to break even. So, so zero is equal to um, our 50 cents times the cups minus the 75. Okay, let's look at this. What should we do next? Well, it looks like if I want to get the letter C by itself to figure out how many cups of hot chocolate I have to sell, I'm going to add the 75 to both sides. That will eliminate it from this side. That would leave me 50 cents times number of cups equals 0 plus 75, which is 75. And clearly, um, I need more room. So let me scroll down a little bit. Alrighty. Now to get the C by itself, I'm going to divide by 50 cents on both sides. You do the same thing to both sides of the equation. That cancels these out. 50 cents divided by 50 cents cancels out. And C is equal to whatever this equals. Okay. So let's see. 75 cents. 75 dollars divided by 50 cents. How many 50 cents go into sets of 50 cents go into 75? Let's set that up over here. So 50 cents, I'm dividing that into 75. All right. Well, uh, one thing we don't have is we don't want to have a decimal in our divisor. So I'm going to move that over two places. Um, basically, I multiplied it by 100. But I'll also have to do the same thing to my dividend. So I moved that over two places. So really, here's the problem we're going to solve. All righty. So I'm actually doing 50 into 7,500. That will give me the same answer as this problem if I would have brought up a calculator. Okay, so 50 goes into 75 one time. Okay, subtract. That would be 25. Bring down my zero. Okay, and 50 goes into 250. 5 times, 5 times 50 is 250, subtract and get a 0, bring my other 0 down, and 50 goes into 0, well, 0 times. And there we go, 150. So it looks like we need to sell 150 cups.
why don't I bring up my calculator and just check that against this problem. 75, just to make sure I get the same answer, divided by 0 0.50. Do I still get 150? Yep, great. So we did that right. Moving on. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to doing the evens. Alrighty. So they want us this time to create an equation that describes the function. So here's what you want to do. You always want to base this on the letter Y, the output. So you want Y to be equal to something. What are they doing to these input numbers to create these output numbers? There's always one rule. Well, at first it looks like they're adding nothing, but no, that's not true because now one became a three, two became a six, and three became a nine. So what are they doing to the X numbers to get the Y numbers? Have you figured it out? They're multiplying by three. So there's our equation. The Y numbers are equal to these X numbers times three. Three times zero is zero. Three times one is three. Two times three is six. And three times three is nine. Over here, if, I don't know if you took a look at this one yet, this isn't multiplying. It actually has to do with adding, but I don't want to go into that because I'm going to have my own students solve that one. All right, again, looking at the odds, write a function rule for this statement. Now remember, these are the ones that take the sentence and turn it into an equation. Remember what output is? Output's the Y and input is the X. So here we go. So the output Y is do you remember what is is? is? <laughs> Do you remember what is is? Is is the equal sign. Eight less than. Okay, if you hear eight less than something, that actually means minus eight, not eight minus. So it's whenever it's eight less than, not eight less, eight less than. If you see eight less than, it actually means minus eight. So eight away from what? Well, the input. So y equals x take away eight. All right, so that's the kind of thing you would do there. Okay, what was I doing? I'm doing evens now, right? Oh, wait, did I? Odds and evens. No, I'm supposed to be doing evens. I think I did the wrong one. Oh, well, whatever. Let's switch back to evens now. So um, what are we doing on this one? Find the value of y for the given value of x. All right, oh, so here's our equation, and here's our value of x. So all we have to do is plug this number into the equation right here where the x is. So it's y equals 8 times x, which is 3. And 8 times 3, well, 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, not a very nice equal sign, but that works. So there's number 6. All right, number 8. How about I switch colors so we don't confuse these two problems? Now y equals x over 2, which is basically means an x divided by 2, plus 5. So let's just plug in our value of negative 4 right here where the x is, because it says x equals negative 4. So y equals this negative 4 over 2 plus 5. Well, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3. There we go. So number 8 is 3, and we're back to doing the evens again. My bad on those other problems. Okay, so back to the evens. What am I doing now? Graphing the function. Now, clearly I don't have any graph paper here, so we're going to skip the graphs for now. But one thing we could do is at least start a table of values, kind of like the input-output tables. So let me just pick a couple x's and a couple, a couple x's, like 0, 1, and 2 for this equation. So if I put 0 into this equation for x, so if x is 0, 9 times 0 is 0. If x is 1 then 9 times 1 is 9. If x is 2, well, 9 times 2 is 18. And there, if we had some graph paper, we could plot those points and create a little graph for ourselves. But we're going to skip that part for now. Over here, once again, let's make another xy table. Just pick a few x's. How about 0, 1, 2 again? Actually, I think I might adjust that. Be and you might see why if... Uh, if you can guess why, that'd be pretty cool. I'm going to pick 0, um, 2, and 4. Some of you might already know why I did that. So here we go. If I put 0 in here, 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by 2 is 0. And 0 minus 4, well, that would be negative 4. All right. 2, let's put 2 in here now. So 2 is my x. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 take away 4, well, that's negative 3. 
Okay. And finally, four. Let's put four in. Four divided by two. So again, my x is four. Put a four here. Four divided by two is two. And two take away four is negative two. There we go. And again, I could plot these points in a graph and, and draw the line. And I would have the graph. But to save some time, let's just create those tables and move on. And now we have number 14. The cost of admission for a student is four less than the cost of an adult. I've seen that before where the adult has to pay more than the student. Okay, write a function that relates the cost of admission for a student with the cost of admission for an adult. Well, actually, there's two equations you could create here. Um, one would be based on the student. So the student actually pays less. So um, the student price would be the same thing as the adult price take away four. Do you see why? Because the student is four less than the adult. That's one way of writing the equation. There is another, however. Um, another option would be um, the adult. The adult price is the same thing as the student price. Do you know what I'm going to write? The adult price is the same as the student price plus four, right? Because again, the student is four less. So if you had add four to the student price, it would equal the adult price. You kind of might have to pause and rewind and listen to that part again. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, moving on. Part B, what's the cost of admission for a student? Okay, so how much would a student cost if the cost of admission for an adult is 750? Oh, okay, so what we're gonna do here is just put this 750 right here where the adult price is. So student price equals $7.50 minus four. Well, $7.50 minus, $7 minus four is actually uh, $3.50. So there we go, here's that one. And here, what is the cost of admission for an adult when the cost of admission for a student is $2? Oh, I think I'm gonna use the other equation for this one, because now they want me to figure out the adult. So I'm going to use this equation over here. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, take this equation, A equals S plus 4. And But what did they say the student price was? Oh, here it is. The student price is $2. So now it becomes A equals, well, student price is 2. So 2 plus 4. Oh, well, that's easy. 2 plus 4 is 6. There we go. So in that case, the adult price would have been $6. All righty. So there we go bunch of ways to represent our functions. And here's a summary of that. So here's some of the things we talked about. One way to represent a function to show it is just as a, a little statement. And we worked with a few of these. Um, so in words, as a, as a sentence or a statement, you could turn that into an equation. An output is two more than the input. So here's our output is two more than the input. Okay. You could then create a table of values, like right here in this input output table. In a previous video, I talked about mapping diagrams. So you can see the similarities between an input-output table and a mapping diagram. Very similar with our inputs being the x's and the outputs being the y's. Or finally, and we mentioned this, but we didn't make any this time, you could take those points, turn them into ordered pairs, and then plot points on a grid and draw a line. Here's what I mean, like here's one ordered pair, 0, 2, and here's 0, 2 right there. Uh, here's another one, 2, 4. So we come over to and up four, there's another point. And again, you draw the line afterwards. So there we go, we have words, equations, input output tables, mapping diagrams that I showed in a previous video and even making a graph. All right, let's see what's left. Up, oh, we're at the end. So uh, here's a couple of my favorite quotes that are right off of my website, right up here. Um, Patience, persistence and perspiration <laughs> make an unbeatable combination for success. Yep, it's it takes all three to eventually succeed and a long time, that's the patience part. Well, if you thought this video was helpful and want to hear from me again, well, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. Thanks for joining me today. And